Hi, I'm Carla Meske with Spirit Healer School of Shamanism, and I'm here today with Joanna, who is our European instructor. Hello, Joanna. Hello, Carla. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me here today, Carla. Uh, and we're going to have a long series of conversations here because Joanna and I are doing really invigorating, investigative, advancing the shamanic practice, the modern shamanic practice. And I'm doing it coming from really Celtic roots, and she's coming from Northern European roots, reaching back into Siberia. And what this means is that the spirits who work with me, Grandmother Sunflower and all the ones that you may have met if you've ever worked with me, they are the ones teaching me, guiding me, telling me, and then explaining in small steps what it is we're doing. And Joanna's teachers also do the same thing, but they're coming from her Polish lineage, her Northern European lineage, Northern and Eastern European lineage. So they're two different ways of working. And she's brought things to the party that I would never have considered. And um, Joanna, you're the one who came up with this idea that we should be holding an egg in our hands, a chicken egg, and that that egg will absorb the intrusions, the caca out of somebody. And at the same time, it's connected to the all one universe incredible, right? How did you learn about the egg? Tell me about that. Thank you, Carla. Well, actually, uh, spirits taught me. In mm -hmm. our school, when I was studying with you, uh, the, um, the atmosphere of our school is so perfect that you let me discover what my spirits were to were teaching me. So uh, they just taught me. I was just uh, journeying, getting my personal lessons and just improving what they taught me. Right. So I remember you're saying, there's all these eggs are showing up in my journey. What's that about? And I had no idea. So what did I say? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You you said the best words uh, any students may dream about. You just go discover, study. You just you know, go discover. And that's going and discovering and studying is not just into the library, into the historical record. It's working with your spirit teachers for them to bring back the ancient knowledge into new words for our modern world. Actually, uh, it was uh, on the contrary. First, I got lessons from the spirits. First, I got notions. First, I got some intuition and then i found material 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 in the internet right it, was, it wasn't the way that you yes it was it wasn't the library studying it was shamanic studying just life life teaching life studying so when the when the spirits were teaching you so you the eggs are showing up you say, hmm. so you say to your teachers how do i work with this what was the what was the first lessons you learned about how to work with an egg? The first lesson was that uh, when passing the egg over the patient, when f uh, physically present or and the distance uh, healing, the egg absorbs everything, and mm -hmm. it was the first thing. And my first thought was like the egg, not the stone, not. It was the egg. You have to go with the egg. So I stopped asking why. I just followed their teachings. And this so is... you started getting chicken eggs and holding mm -hmm. them in your hand and passing them over people's bodies while you were doing shamanism for them. Exactly. And people uh, started to feel really better, even, all, even uh, also during the session. They started, they cried, they released so many things, emotions, and uh, on the physical level also, the, the health improved. So then I stopped ask why, asking why. I just went for that. There is no, no use to ask. The egg is the egg. Yeah, so you, when you teach egg work to us in the school, mm -hmm. 
when spirit healer school spirit healer circle.com when you teach us how to use the egg you taught us to hold the egg and then you'd have a glass of water and at the end we crack that egg into a glass of water where did that come from it comes uh, from many traditions especially the siberian one mm. and um, you have to release the energy you you thank the the spirit of the egg that uh, he wanted to work with you you release the energy to the water and then you release everything to the mother earth for the successive healing of what was extracted it's not enough only to throw away the egg this is like uh, without respect in the shamanism that uh, spirits taught me you just release and thank everything that worked with you right right so i know in the siberian tradition there's a lot of work with effigy right that um classical old siberian shamans would create an object and infuse spirit link spirit into it put spirit in it ask spirit to bind to that and then they put these in the house to protect the house and so on and so forth but there's also this is this is kind of an effigy work because we're using a physical object to do spiritual work so um they i know the ukrainians are famous for their eggs and so is that true through russia and into siberia the use of decorated eggs and eggs as healing properties yes yes of course and it is also well known in poland for easter we decorate eggs and the tradition is uh, comes even before christianism came it is like thanking the new life the spirit of the new life and the egg in, especially in eastern europe is uh, very well known as the source of a new life so it's interesting beginning. that we're using the egg to take away the intrusions mm -hmm. and at the same time the egg is a symbol or is contains all the potential for becoming new there's no coincidence there uh, i will give you some some lessons that spirits uh, gave me uh, since we are talking uh, about the egg that is everything that is connected to the source uh back to the source goes everything sicknesses energy of sicknesses energy of your uh stress energy of your physical uh, not well-being everything goes there because uh following the siberian shamanism everything has the spirit also the sickness has the spirit and um depression has the spirit so you are just putting back the spirit of the sickness of or your uh, staying bad back to the source because this spirit this energy has the right to re, um, start again to evolve again this is not like treating with uh, anger it is like okay you gave me problems and i am sick i am down but now i acknowledge your presence i take your lessons and i put back the spirit of the sickness back to the source it's so interesting because by i mean i love this way of doing transmutation which is way different than casting it out and smashing it down way different but um i just want to speak for a minute about the way that egg work has evolved for me so um joanna has taught me how to use the egg as she does and i don't do that and i don't do that because it just isn't part of the the protocols and the the techniques that my spirit grandmother sunflower has um driven into me has 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 really laid down as my my fabric for how i do shamanic practice so i honor and respect it but i don't walk around with eggs in my hand okay but here's this grandmother sunflower has meticulously taught me how to call in the circle and to use the crossroads with the four directions to have gateways at each of the four and then to have the sacred trees surrounding the circle 
lock bow on the top so that their canopy contains us in an egg-like fashion on the top and the roots below contain us so that when we're in that called in sacred circle, we're held in an egg-like sphere of power. Okay. In the center of that is a source power and it changes all the time. It's it's like the and everything else go like that. Okay, so this is the foundation of calling in. When Joanna taught egg to us, when plants into the water, all that, when she taught us that, Grandmother Sunflower said, honey, said, yes, would you look at the circumference of the circle now? It's the egg. So I learned that the egg is a cosmic egg and that the chicken egg is a expression of the cosmic egg. I don't like to use the word symbol. I don't believe in symbols. I believe in expressions. And a difference between an expression and a symbol is that the symbol is this thing out there that has a job to talk about that. A, an expression is the thing itself taking a form that's different than it's than this is. So, uh, or is a unique aspect of it, you know, something like that. It's it's it's, it's the way this thing is looking right now. So. The egg, the chicken egg, is an expression of the cosmic egg. Oh, my gosh. But this is the first time that I've put together why the intrusion goes in and can be transmuted within that egg at the same time because what you're just saying, it's going back to source. Girl, you blow me away. <laughs> Perfect, Carla. Thank you for for uh, explaining your your shamanic work with the egg this is so wonderful and uh, actually there was another lesson that uh, spirits gave me <clears throat> that the physical egg is the expression of the source that as you said is alive it is it's it's alive in the way our body is the expression of the spirits we ho spirit we host so there is another way of connection. Maybe we will talk about this uh, one day later. I really want to because with when you go in, we're going to have to go into the three souls because when when you look at what we are, flesh, bones, the spirit, blah, 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 we are expressions of the earth too. You know that here we are like a tree, like a rock. We are the earth's idea, the earth's conception expressing Hello. another fantastic thing is that you said joanna uh, gave her teachings but i did them mine this is very important thing uh, especially in our school we just pass the notions and we drive the car in our own way i mean we right. we we use it the way our spirits guide us to right Right. For us to work uh, in full power as shamanic practitioners, that power is because we are connected to our spirit guides. Our spirit guides, we have in, in our training, we merge and merge and merge so that our physical energy and our emotional and spiritual energy can reflect and express the spirits who work with us. And so we become a bonded pair. And in that way, we bring things that we've learned. Hey, look at this one. Blah, blah, blah. And the spirit says, that's lovely, honey. And here's how we work with that. Okay. And every time you do that, you bring in, oh, I just learned about tarot cards. I just learned about whatever it is. You bring that to your spirits and they say, oh, that's so sweet, honey. Here's how we'll work with that. And then you be begin to build your own repertoire of authentic knowledge and power. Yeah. This is perfect. Thank you, Carla, for our school, because this is the spirit of our school. Yes. 
And in in um, Europe, you're doing this with your people, and you've been talking to me about working with bees, beeswax, all sorts of things. So we're gonna, we're, you know, we could have a preview of those, but that's the kind of the conversations we'll be having on our little Spirit Healer Circle podcast. So happy, so happy to be here, and so honored to to be here. Hmm, happy you are. Um. I want to talk a little bit more about the egg, if you, if that's okay with you, because okay. you may know that I've got this passion for photographing the Milky Way. Mm-hmm. Kind of a, it's yeah. just swept me up and took me outside, and it's really changed my world. Uh, and I'll talk. I could talk at length about that, but the part of it that applies here really is when we open the gateway of the North. And for you, you do this in the East. So the traditions have moved the circle a little bit. Eh, eh. So the The spirit of the Milky Way comes in and envelops the entire circle. But the core of the Milky Way meets the center of the circle. And it is in that way that the circle becomes a point and a whole, a point of the infinite and the infinite itself bounded by the energy that the Milky Way gives each calling in. So the Milky Way, she's got a way of setting the boundary of the circle to so it is totally sacred space. And at the same time is a particular expression of her entire beauty. Wonderful. And that's the egg. That's the egg. We've seen it. People in the circle have seen this thing looking like an egg that's neon and shimmering and glowing and then becoming infinitely small into a point in the center and then expanding out again. And this is the source. This is everything. This is everything and nothing. This is just the ocean of the energy. It's crazy, isn't it? Uh huh. And inside, how many black holes are in the Milky Way? There's a trivia question. One more, but we don't know because we're just we're still discovering them. But we do know at the center in the core, there's a really big black hole, and they've actually photographed it recently. Thank you, science. Yes, I I read something. Sorry, that there is also they also um, heard signals uh, on the other side of the black hole. This is where we journeyed to before. Yes, yes. In in our school, we do a course that is a uh, based upon Claude Poncelet's work. Claude Poncelet is an astrophysicist, shamanic practitioner, instructor who really devoted a big chunk of his shamanic work to creating a a method for students to go out and journey to the objects of the universe, the the big cosmic objects. And it's really a phenomenal, phenomenal series of journeys. We do that in a course called Spirits of the Cosmos, which is what Claude called it. Claude is now on the other side, and trust me, he's still directing it. Thank you, God. I can feel it. I can feel who <laughs> he's. <laughs> he's, you know, you must be impeccable. That was his favorite word. You must be impeccable. <laughs> um, what what was that? What why why did I bring? Because we connected Milky Way to the egg, and this is the source. Right, and... right, and the black hole. So as we have done more and more cosmos work, we realize that the that the fastest, easiest, simplest um, expression that we should um, bring to our mind when we're doing transmutation is the black hole. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and in the foundation for shamanic studies, we were taught to take the intrusions into the water where it would dissolve. And that's, you know, nobody's saying not to do that. But when we call the circle in, in the way that we do, and the Milky Way becomes both within and without, the black hole is the dead center. 
And if you step up to the event horizon and you dump all your caca into that, big things happen. Oh, yes. Big okay. things happen. So in my journey work in the last, I'm just going to say the last month as this is evolving, the center of the circle. So I, I call my in the circle, grandmother sunflower brings in the client, gets them all comfortable, offers them tea. And then the center of the circle begins to shape shift depending on what we're doing. And recently there's been a um, a stainless steel rail around the edge of the center. You know, like you are uh, have a rail around a geyser and you're looking at a geyser, right? And the people go inside and they hang on to the rail. Uh... And they're, they're, they're clinging to the event horizon of the black hole and they don't dive all the way through. They just send in their intention to release everything and then when that's done they step out so they never really get that whole um shape-shifting um dismemberment experience mm -hmm. and when i'm working for them when they're working for themselves of course they can but when i'm working for them we maintain that structure they get rid of that they step back out and then a cloak is put around them that has the words and the recipe for them to regain their power and move forward. And this is so fantastic and so similar to the egg when I work with a patient, uh, especially on the distance, because they hold an egg also in their hands. And in the journey, in the ceremony, in the healing session, they release into this egg the energy of everything they are ready to release. Everything that you said, the, your client just putting into the black hole, they just put it into the egg, into mm. the physical egg or in the egg they hold in their journey when they're over there. I mean, as a spirit, because they also hold um, an egg uh, in the journey. So this is just the same thing. And this is wonderful. Yeah. Now, when you're working with a client, so they're holding onto their egg and they're, let's say that they're in Poland and you're in Italy and you're doing a Zoom like we are now and they're holding onto their egg and you're holding onto yours. At the end, what do you instruct them to do with this egg? What happens? Tell me how you go. I always say, now you release your egg into, uh, egg into the water and please be thankful for everything that this egg extracted from you. Mm. Please remember that whatever you see, because sometimes people may see faces or something that uh, it is gone. So priest, release it and thank it. Let it go. It's like double letting go. One in the journey and one on the physical level after the, the session. Yeah. Please be careful and please be warned that you are also letting go the sickness on the physical level in this this egg so this is you know there's you just something just went <laughs> double release really. oh, the the um be thankful and be full of gratitude and it this walks right into that that dilemma question how do I put this without falling into a trap? Um, we want to get rid of the things that are bothering us. We don't like them. They may, they're bad. They're sick. They're, they're, people will come and say, cut the cord to, cut the cord to, cut the cord to. Okay. So that's how we feel. And on the other hand, we say, what is the reason I'm sick? What is the reason that this has happened to me? So in the middle of that is, what is the beauty that can come from the fact that I was? Perfect. This is another aspect of working with the egg. Uh, I will tell you the way I work. So when people 
start uh, stop releasing everything to the egg to the physical egg or the egg they hold in the hands in their hands in the circle then we step into the source i go with them and they retrieve everything their personal power uh, there are doubts the whatever they need they just merge with the source for a second and i am there we are this is the guided journey and then they step back full integral mm -hmm. this is not only about extraction it is also about regaining what we lost Ooh, i like that i'm going to incorporate that into my work now thank you thank you i think i've been doing that I mean, I do that because all my journeys, I speak out loud, so thus they become guided journeys if the client is following. But I don't always ask the client to be the guy, to be the to be a conscious participant in following a thread that I am not directing. Very often, clients fall asleep. And they don't remember nothing, and it's so nice because you work directly with the spirit. With their spirits uh, and uh, when they wake up i don't remember nothing there is recording for you how are you feeling so much better oh, oh, oh okay so we by guided journey you mean, you mean you speak out loud that you are taking them into that place for them to retrieve it yeah yeah, yeah. exactly and yeah that's yeah know. that's 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 the way i work yeah yeah wow um is there anything else about the egg that you want to share at this time. So it, while, we're, while we're concluding the, this chapter of our brand new podcast series. Well, as you said, uh, there are so many ways with uh, working of working with the egg and I wish everybody could have uh, their own because you, your work is as precious as mine or as our of our other friends. Recently, I started to do even uh, one more thing in my mm -hmm. garden. In my garden, people come. I light lit a little fire. I have a water flowing. There is the night. People keep the egg in their hands. I just drum. I connect it. I connect to the spirit of the nature. All spirits, uh, helpers. I open the circle. People fall asleep, and we don't talk even a word person when she wakes she he wakes up she just throw the egg into the fire because this is also the releasing truth people what happened i don't know it doesn't matter how are you feeling i know what happened because there was a journey it was unspoken one but the spirits of the nature connected with the spirit of the of the egg of uh, connected with the spirit of the um, client, mine, whatever is guiding spirit will come. It's it's a bomb. <laughs> Sorry, I will say like that. You are the best. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> wow, that's great, Joanna. Because spirits taught me, the more people talk about their problems, the more they uh, make them large, large. Yeah. They they just feed them. So recently it was, hello, how are you? Are you comfortable? Do you want a cup of tea? Uh, there is a water. No, relax. Nothing. Why? I wanted to say, no, it doesn't matter. Mm. So this is also the egg teaching. The egg spirit said, I, I don't want to hear, listen anymore to, to, <laughs> to mm. the story. Just trust. Mm just trust and connect yeah that's that's a that is so great i know that i always interview the client to bring forward what it is their core issues are but it isn't for me to know it's for me to be able to have um, a checklist as i'm going through the journey but it's really for them to bring it forward so that they can release that for sure so yes, that, that's they have the opportunity to release all this stuff. Make sure that you get that you've cleaned that closet, that drawer out of your cupboard. <laughs> this is what I am doing on the phone before we meet here. But yeah. when you come here, no more words. No more words. And when I begin journeying, it's no words. 
And the, the imagery can be, um, well, it can be as wild as the spirits want it to be. It is great. Oh, gosh, it's so good to speak with you. I look forward to our doing this every week. Thank you, Carla. So very happy that we started this adventure together. Oh yeah, we've got we've got a lot a long ways to go, a lot to do. I mean, you've got the whole vineyard thing. I want to know all about the vineyard thing. Um, I, I want to know all about your getting mad and how that changes the energy when you know once in a while you get rah, and that that's so Siberian. Oh my gosh to allow your determination to become absolute. Yeah. Michael Horner used to talk about one of the pre predilections for a miracle is your absolute determination to have it. And the anger uh, may be constructive. The energy of the anger may be constructive. Let's call totally. it totally the, the spirit of the anger, but you have to accept it. <laughs> Yeah, this is the Siberian thing. Yeah, yeah it's a very Siberian thing. <laughs> oh, boy, this is good. Well, thank you, darling. I love you so much. You can find both of us at spirithealercircle.com. I'm Carla Meske. Thank you. I am Joanna. And we are Spirit Healer. Thank you. <laughs>